struggled in debates in the primary seasons in 2007 and 2008. Um, everyone thought we were lowering expectations until the first debate. Um, <laughs> then they tended to believe sort of at least what we had to say about that. Uh, no, I, I think that, uh, I think that you know, without going into a whole host of reasons, uh, no, I think the president needed to, um, I mean, the biggest thing I think was uh, energy uh, was, was, was part of it. And the second part of it was, um, you know, on a, on a bunch of different topics was not organizing an answer in a way in which, quite frankly, you, you would in a debate. And I think that was the biggest change in the second and, and, and the third debates was answering the question with a broader topic sentence and then building underneath that question uh, the case for the topic sentence and answering that question. And look, he got into this a bit in 2007 and 2008. Uh, with uh, with the Democratic presidential candidates, it's, it's a little harder when you have, you know, these de these debates all start out with eight or nine uh, candidates in the primaries. They get whittled down. Um, then Senator Clinton, uh, in in many ways, up the president's game dramatically in this. You know, presidents are not used to debates. Uh, they don't go through the primary process like Governor Romney did. Um, Carl and I can both tell you, people don't generally walk into the Oval Office, sit this close to the president, and tell him he's um, full of it. Uh, and, you know, that's why you go back and you look at history, Reagan in 1980, Bush in 19, uh, I'm sorry, Bush in 2004, Obama in 2012, where, quite frankly, the first debate is just not their high watermark. So, uh, you know, I, I think the debates... The debates are widely seen. They're probably the biggest events that you see. And, and, and look, there, there are only a couple events in a campaign. Uh, debates and, in some ways, the convention speeches where a lot of events, you know, you are not going to see, you're not going to go home tonight and see the full event or the speech that the president gives in Boulder, Colorado tonight. You're going to see what the news brings you from what he said in that speech in Boulder. What's different about both these convention speeches uh, for the candidates and for basically the spouses and a couple of the very big surrogates in the debates is it's much more unfiltered. It's not through the eyes of somebody interpreting events of this is what happened in Boulder. It's the candidates, a moderator, or even not a moderator with the speech. So you didn't walk into the Oval Office and grab President Obama by the lapels and shake him and say, will you wake up for the second debate? Uh, if I did that, the Secret Service would have intervened, uh, which I never want to get my friends in the Secret Service. Uh, I did spend some time with the president between those debates uh, and, and, and emailed him and, and, and visited with him at the White House uh, one afternoon. Uh, but look, by the, time, by the time I got to the White House that day, he knew he, he didn't need a group of people to tell him uh, he hadn't done well in the debate. But again, I think, look, I, I work for a guy who very early in my career, uh, with in working with Barack Obama, in, in late 2004, he told me, after he'd been elected to the Senate, before he'd been sworn in, he said, look, I, I, I want to make sure you always tell me what you think, regardless of what I think at the time. And But it's very different, like I said, when you're in a meeting in the Oval Office, the chairs are kind of situated like this, and there's, well, you know, and then, as Carl will tell you, there's always some guy who says, you know what, I'm going in there. And I'm going to tell him this is wrong. And I'm going to tell him what for. And he gets in there and says, that's a very nice time, Mr. President. You look great today. I just I saw you on TV last yeah. night. That was a good interview. And you're all like, son of a, you know. <laughs> just, just briefly, were you surprised by the, by the extent of the hit the president took in the polls as a result of that first debate performance? You've already said it wasn't his high watermark. But no. in terms of this campaign, or did that not surprise you? No, I mean, I think, look, I, I think in many ways, if you look at the structure of this race, I think Mitt Romney, from right before the Republican convention through the 47% tape, uh, had lost uh, a four to five points, three to five points of political altitude as a result of um, a convention that didn't really mesh, a Democratic convention that was really good, and then uh, a, a, a tape in which he said what he believes and then said he um, phrased it poorly. Um, and I think what happened in the debate was he got back a lot of that three to five points that he missed. But if you look at if you look at where the states are tonight, and you look at where the states were in sort of early to mid-August, 
they're very much the same. There was a, a period of relative stability. Uh, the president went up, Romney went down. The first debate happened, the president went down, Romney went up, and we're sort of back to where we were in August. I think the truth is when we look back at this race, we're going to see, even though we've had this massive amount of public polling that would make you believe that there's been these massive swings and voter shifts in attitude from day to day, you'll see a, a largely stable race. Carl, debates.